couple of days ago, the Malaysian budget airline Maya Airlines suspended all its operation overnight, leaving thousands of travelers stranded. I was lucky enough to fly the airline from Bangkok to Kuala Lumpur just a few days before they went bankrupt and I experienced some very mixed emotions. So what was it like to fly Malaysia's newest airline, who are already history? Let's find out. But let me know what you think about this. My Airlines and Durian Berhad's co-founder and majority shareholder, Gong Huan Hua, along with two members of his family, were arrested last night. It definitely wasn't an easy week for My Airline, and even their co-founder was arrested this week, being accused of money laundering as well as financing terrorism, just to mention a few charges. So let's keep an eye on this as things develop. I'm sure there's more to come in the next days. My trip started in Thailand's capital, Bangkok, flying to Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, which was the first international flight my airline introduced after initially focusing on domestic operations within Malaysia only. We're departing from Don Muang Airport today, which is mostly home to budget airlines such as Nok Air or Air Asia. So let's check in and see what the airline has in store for us today. I gotta be honest, apart from the long waiting time, the check-in experience was absolutely wonderful with great and super friendly staff. That's what we want. That's a nice, right? <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, can you get that story message over there by yourself? Alright, I have okay, to After that. you drop your hand for inside. Thank you very much. So, all checked in for my My Airline, not your airline, My Airline, <laughs> 325 2KL. And my question for you guys is, and let me know in the comment section below is, does Asia need another budget airline? I'm not too sure about it, but let me know what you think about this. Don Muang Airport used to be Bangkok's main airport until 2006 and it's currently the world's largest low-cost carrier airport. But let me share an interesting story with you. In 1999, a Qantas 747 overshot the runway in an attempt to land during heavy thunderstorms. The damage was such that the aircraft was initially a write-off, but to preserve its reputation, Qantas had it repaired at a cost of less than 100 million Australian dollars. Returning the aircraft to service enabled Qantas to retain its record of having never lost an airplane in an accident since the beginning of the jet age. And here is today's plane, one of nine Airbus A320s the airline used to operate. The majority of them used to fly for Asia before and the remaining ones were initially in service for Air Berlin, Germany's second largest carrier that went bankrupt in 2017. I then made my way to the gate and it seemed I just missed a murder happening. At least it looked like a crime scene from all the red stains on the ceiling. It was then time for boarding, but let's talk about marketing and brand identity. My airline often portrayed itself as funny, high-energy airline with dancing crew and happy employees, which is a strong selling point. I mean, who wouldn't want to fly with an airline that is all about positivity? But it also creates a certain expectation among customers when boarding an airline that is high-energy and extremely welcoming. You can't sell me an apple juice, but in fact end up serving you water. So I was slightly disappointed when I stepped on board facing a super low energy crew. However, something I didn't know at the time was that the airline delayed paying salary to the crew and hence they didn't feel like being extraordinary outgoing at the time. There's always two sides of every story and sometimes we just don't know what's going on behind the scenes really. However, we also do pay a lot of money for our trips, something that also needs to be considered taking a stand for the customer side. So guys, here we are. Welcome aboard My Airlines. It gives a very strong uh, Air Asia vibes. Um, in fact, this 320 used to fly with Air Asia and is now operated by My Airline. I do love the interior. It looks nice, clean, and fresh, and very budget. 
but that's what it is, a budget airline. And uh, yeah, very much looking forward to see what this flight is going to be like, what the food is going to be like, uh, whether it can compete with Uncle Chin Chicken Rice, which is one of my all-time favorites. Uh, but so far, so good. I paid a little extra to be seated in the emergency row, which offered a great legroom situation. Also, seats on my airline don't recline. We then pushed back and headed for the runway, and at the same time I got a notification from Flight Radar 24 that an AirAsia plane that just took off ahead of us declared an emergency. Not something you want to see when you're about to take off. We then took off and I noticed a really amazing feature. Did you know that there is a full public golf course located in between both runways at Don Myung Airport? Neither did I until today. So if you live in Bangkok and love golf, message me and we shall play in between all the airport action. How cool would that be? Today's review is literally full of cool facts. So people always ask me, Josh, what do you do on the ground? How do you plan your trips? How do you find this cool golf course at the airport in Bangkok? Very simple, whether I go to Tokyo, New York or London, I always use Magic. Magic is an AI travel assistant who helps you put together a really cool itinerary. And I was very skeptical of it until I tried it myself. Magic helps you to put together a customized itinerary without doing all the research by yourself. Even aviation related activities are no problem for Magic to find anywhere in the world. It's super easy to use, it doesn't take much time and it even tells you how to get from one place to another. But it also helps you to find the perfect hotel for you, even showing reviews from previous guests and all the things you need to know about the property. But yes, Magic is an amazing tool that helps me put together an amazing itinerary. And though I don't use it one by one, but it gives me great suggestions about where to eat, what to see, where to stay, and uh, it's completely for free. So check out the link in the description box below or in the pinned comment. Try it for yourself and you'll be impressed just as much as I was. Artificial intelligence is pretty impressive these days and it also gives you great discounts on hotels and such. So give it a go, let me know what you think, and now let's go back to the review. My airline used to sell snacks on board, or you can purchase them online while you make your booking, just as AirAsia does, and I'm a huge fan of their Uncle Chin chicken rice, so I was wondering whether my airline can match this iconic Malaysian airplane meal. So, moment of truth has arrived. Uh barbecue chicken rice sitting right in front of me pressure is on let's see what it tastes like and as you can see I literally finished it all in fact it even made my water bottle dance so yes a huge thumbs up from my side So currently I am sitting in row 14, the row ahead of me is row number 12, so row number 13 is missing. And I've definitely been on planes or airlines before that feature uh, row 13, but uh, not on this one, mostly in Asia. Why is that? Are they superstitious or what is the real reason for that, that some have it and some don't? Let me know in the comment section below if you know why. It was then time for the duty-free sales and the crew gave it all for the next 20 minutes, something I've experienced on AirAsia plenty of times and it can get quite annoying after some time. And of course the Lou review and this one is a historical one because it was the last ever Lou review conducted on my airline. Who would have thought that before I entered the laboratory? What a great moment to witness for me and all the Afgeeks all around the world. Seatbelt signs were switched on and we started our descent into Kuala Lumpur. My airlines used to fly in and out of KR2, which hosts AirAsia and other budget airlines. But my question for you guys, do you think we will ever see my airline airborne again or are they already history? 
I saw an announcement by the airline that said that they are about to secure more funding. However, my guess is that my airline will be remembered as one of the nation's biggest aviation failure. The airline that barely lasted for a year. From the plane to the luggage belt in, I'd say, in clearing immigration in two minutes and 47 seconds. <laughs> Not bad. So, welcome from the Limeridian in Putrajaya with a rather beautiful view. It's rather close to the airport um, as well because tomorrow I'll be flying Malaysia Airlines to Bali on the 737 in business class. So, let's see what Malaysia Airlines is up to these days. And my airline, what is my feedback? Ground experience was amazing. One of the nicest ground uh, staff I had in a long time. And they hype you up, hey? They make you feel good, you have a good day, and then you get on board, and then you face some, I don't know, weirdly unmotivated crew. It wasn't really as outgoing because like, when I followed my airline on social media, they have a really amazing social media presence. And it's all about being laid back, being friendly, being cool. And I think this is the problem sometimes uh, when the marketing or the social media department is performing so strong and is doing such an amazing job that you come on board with different expectations. And in the end, it was just like pretty much a copy of AirAsia. Though with AirAsia, I always have like fantastic crew. Um, interior was quite nice though. Food was amazing um, as well. Overall, it was a pleasant experience though does this region and especially Malaysia need another budget airline? That's the question. The load apparently is pretty good. Will they survive in the long run? We sure see. But um, overall, it was pretty okay. So I think the only thing is, I think the social media department and the current crew, I think they need to sit, uh, sit together and kind of manage expectations and not overhype them. But overall, the value for money that I received, top notch, um, it was really good. I can't really complain. But this is it, guys. Um, also, if you want to uh, join my WhatsApp group, access some extra perks, such as early access to my videos, have your name in the credits, get a Cahill keyring, check out my Patreon page in the description box below, or follow me on Instagram, social media, um, and uh, yeah. Also, let me know in the comment section below what you think of today's flight and what your expectations are when you get on a flight and how do you manage them so we can all learn from each other. All right, guys, this is it. Where are we off to? Have a safe trip. <laughs>